Hello everyone, this is Urvashi Chahan and you are watching Quotes Today by Live Law, your one-step destination to all legal developments in the country. Let us start. Starting with the important update on the plea moved by Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal before the Delhi High Court challenging his arrest by the Enforcement Directorate in the money laundering case related to the alleged liquor policy scam. Justice Swarnakant Sharma today announced the verdict in the matter. Kejriwal's arrest has been upheld and so is the subsequent remand. The court held that material collected by Enforcement Directorate reveals that Kejriwal conspired and was involved in formulation of excise policy and used the proceeds of crime. During the hearing, Kejriwal had argued that he could not be held vicariously liable since Aam Admi Party was not a company but a political party registered under the Representative of People's Act. Let me tell you, Section 70 of PMLA provides that when a company contravenes the PMLA, every person who at the time of contravention was in charge of conduct of business of the company will be deemed to be guilty. The court has said that provisions of Section 70 do apply in this instance. The court also said that magistrate court's order remanding Kejriwal to custody was a reasoned order. On Kejriwal's arguments challenging the timing of his arrest right before general elections, the court said that he had been arrested in a money laundering case and the court had to examine his arrest as per law, irrespective of timing of elections. Significantly, Kejriwal's counsel had also questioned reliability of the statements given against Kejriwal by approvers. If you remember, it was argued that the statements by approvers were given in exchange for their release and ticket to contest elections. On this point, the court made it clear that approvers' statements were recorded by the court and not by the probe agency, and that Kejriwal would be permitted to cross-examine them at the appropriate stage. With this, the High Court has dismissed the plea moved by the Delhi Chief Minister. In a significant update, the bench of Justices Aniruddh Bose and Sanjay Kumar has upheld the 2019 election of independent MLA Kari Kokri from Tezu Assembly constituency in Arunachal Pradesh. In 2019, Kari Kokri won as an independent MLA. The Congress candidate who lost the election challenged the result through an election petition seeking to annul Kari's victory. It was contended that Kri had exercised undue influence by not disclosing three vehicles owned by his wife and his son while filing the nomination for contesting the election, and that he failed to disclose that he occupied a government-allotted MLA cottage in Itanagar. The High Court had held the election to be invalid, against which Kri approached the Supreme Court. But the Supreme Court has today set aside the decision of the High Court. The bench said that non-disclosure of vehicles cannot be held to be a corrupt practice as per the representation of People's Act. Finding the vehicles to be either gifted or sold before filing of the nomination by Cree, the court said that the vehicles could not be considered to be still owned by his wife and son. The court significantly observed that a voter's right to know is not absolute. Candidates are not obligated to disclose every detail of their lives to voters. Their right to privacy remains intact, especially regarding matters irrelevant to their candidature. The Supreme Court Bench of Justices M.M. Sondaresh and S.V.N. Bhatti today heard Bhima Koregaon accused Gautam Navlakha's plea for shifting his house arrest location in Mumbai alongside NIA's plea challenging a Bombay High Court order granting him bail in December last year. While issuing this verdict, the High Court had suspended the operation of the bail order for three weeks. The stay was extended further by the Supreme Court in January. During earlier proceedings, the NIA has expressed its concerns over the order of house arrest. Apart from this, the NIA has also stressed that Navlakha must first pay 1.6 crores to meet the cost of surveillance incurred during his house arrest. Navlakha has opposed such a demand, accusing the agency of extortion. Today, the court orally told Navlakha's counsel advocate Shahadan Farasat that if house arrest was sought, the surveillance expenses incurred by the National Investigation Agency must be paid. However, Farasat submitted that paying the expenses was of no difficulty and that the issue was about calculating such expenses. He added that he would take the latest circulation form from additional Solicitor General S. V. Raju representing the NIA and would address it. 
The court then adjourned the matter while making it clear that it would examine the calculation as filed by the agency and objections regarding the same on the next date of hearing. Coming to a short update on the matter pertaining to electronic voting machine data cross-checking against VVPAT record. The petitions were listed today before a bench comprising Justices Sanjeev Khanna and Dipankar Datta. Since the bench was hearing another matter, it clarified that the EVM VVPAT petitions would be heard next week. If you remember, last week the matter was mentioned by senior advocate Kapil Sibyl. Let me tell you, the Association for Democratic Reforms jointly with another non-profit common cause had moved the Supreme Court in 2019, seeking an investigation into alleged discrepancies in the 17th Lok Sabha elections held in the same year. While this petition prayed for EVM count to be tallied against the record of the register, the recent petitions filed by Association for Democratic Reforms sought a verification of EVM data against VVPAT records. The court had issued notice in the 2019 petition and had directed it to be tagged with a similar petition filed by Trinamool Congress legislator Mawa Moitra seeking publication of details relating to voter turnout and final vote counts in the 2019 elections. In another update, the Supreme Court today permitted Uttar Pradesh MLA Abbas Ansari to attend a Fateha ceremony scheduled tomorrow in respect of his father Mukhtar Ansari. Mukhtar, as you know, was a gangster turned politician who died on 28th March following a cardiac arrest while undergoing sentence of life imprisonment. His son Abbas is currently in jail over an arms license case. Though the present petition was initially filed for Ansari to be able to attend his father's funeral rites, it could not be listed in time. As such, on the last date, he was permitted to amend the petition and supply a copy to the respondent state. State of Uttar Pradesh today vehemently opposed the plea, saying that Abbas was a history sheeter whose conduct inside Chitrakoot jail led to his transfer to Kasganj jail. The additional advocate general on behalf of state further claimed that there was no ceremony scheduled for tomorrow and that the application seeking permission to attend Fateha had not been served on the state. This statement was objected to by Abbas's counsel, senior advocate Kapil Sibyl. After hearing the submissions, the bench ordered that Abbas be taken to his hometown to attend the ritual today and brought back to Kasganj jail on 13th April. The bench also recorded Sibyl's statement that Abbas would not interact with media persons and will only visit his family members. Coming to an update from the Kerala High Court over the death of veterinary student Siddharthan J.S. He was a second-year Bachelor of Veterinary Science and Animal Husbandry student at the College of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, Pokode in Vayanad, who allegedly committed suicide on 18th February because of ragging and brutal assault from the college. Initially, crime was registered for unnatural death and later additional offences including abetment of suicide, criminal conspiracy and provisions under Kerala Prohibition of Ragging Act were added. The state government sanctioned the CBI investigation but it was getting delayed and hence a plea seeking a CBI investigation was moved by Siddharthan's father. Justice Beko Kurian Thomas observed that the Union government had issued a notification under the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act entrusting the investigation with the Central Bureau of Investigation. With this, the High Court closed the plea moved by Jay Prakash's father. The court also directed the state government and state police to provide all assistance to the CBI for conducting the investigation. The National Investigation Agency, NIA, has approached the Calcutta High Court over recent attacks against its officers in West Bengal's Bhupati Nagar. The central agency has been investigating a 2022 case involving blasts which occurred in Bhupati Nagar, East Midnapur. NIA claimed that its officers were attacked during the course of their duty when they had picked up two local leaders for questioning in connection with the case and that the state police had registered FIRs for molestation against the agency's officers who were attacked at the behest of family members of the accused persons. Local reports state that the attacks were precipitated when the NIA picked up two Trinamool Congress leaders in connection with the blasts. The case is now to be heard by a single judge bench of Justice Jay Sen Gupta. Stay tuned. 
And lastly, the Allahabad High Court has observed that under the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act 2012, offences cannot be dismissed solely on the basis of a compromise between the accused and the prosecutrix victim. The single judge bench of justice Samit Gopal observed this while dismissing a plea seeking to set aside summoning and cognizance orders as well as seeking a stay on criminal proceedings against the accused in this case for the offence of rape with a minor. The accused had approached the court arguing that a compromise had been reached between the parties after the FIR was filed. He requested that the pending case be resolved based on this compromise. Additionally, the victim here also supported the petition of the accused. But the court said that even if the minor victim consents, it's irrelevant for the registration of the offence. This stance remains consistent throughout all stages, including compromise. The fact that the minor later agrees to compromise with the accused is not enough to dismiss the proceedings under the POXO Act. Thank you for watching. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.